All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. I'm going to finish up the message that I didn't finish up last Sunday. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes, we're in the book of Ecclesiastes of all books. Chapter 7, verse 10. Say not thou what is the cause of thy former days were better than these. For thou doest not require wisely concerning this. Solomon was saying, as some people do, the good old days were better. Solomon says, don't go back to the good old days. Live for the present. Amen. I took that theme and showed you some things the church in the good old days had that we do not have in the church today. We showed you that the church had respect in the good old days. It, it had a respect of its testimony, of its preaching, its praying, its praising. We showed you that it carried the torch, the Word of God. The church was, was, could be trusted back in the old days. It had respect. Secondly, the church was right in the good old days. It was right and it's belief in the Bible. Churches today are not believing in the Bible anymore. We do here. Yes. Thank you. We practice what is in here. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't care what the rest of the world says. We're going to practice this book and this book only. Amen. The church was headed in the right direction. It preached the cross. Now it preaches philosophy and psychology and psychiatry and psychotherapy. And the easy believism that's going around today. That's what it's preaching today. Good old, people like Joel Olstein, you know, positive and all that. That's false preaching. We don't need that today. We need preaching from the Word of God today. Amen. Amen. But only did the, the old church in the old days, only did they preach the cross, they practiced the cross. They practiced what they preached. And then we saw that the church had real... In the good old days. That's what I want to look at today. The church was real in the good old days. In the good old days, it had real preachers. Now, I know I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> you have a choice. But, wait, but you know what? I carry an old message. Mm -hmm. That you need to be born again by the Spirit of God. Amen. And if you're not saved this morning, you need to be saved. Mm -hmm. and, we need to, and we need to hear that more often. Turn with me, please, to John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, I want you to notice, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou uh, do as a shepherd, God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. Isn't that interesting? A religious man, a Pharisee, didn't know God. And he comes up to Jesus by night. What does Jesus hit him with? Are you born again? Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter into a second time in his mother's womb and be born? He was ignorant. What? I got to be reborn in my mother's womb? That's what went right over his head. <laughs> Jesus said, If I very accept a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And notice verse 6 That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is what? Spirit. You, we are born in flesh. We're going to die in flesh. That's why we need to be changed by the Spirit of God. Yes. Turn to John 6, 63. In John chapter 6, I want you to notice verse 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. If the flesh profiteth what? Nothing. Nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. A man must be born again of the Spirit so he can have life. Amen? Amen. Because because in flesh, he'll die in his sin without Christ. He'll die in his sin. It's very important that a person be born again. Look at Romans chapter 7, verse 18. Turn over there. Romans chapter 7. 
Now I want you to notice verse number 18. The Bible says, For I know that is in me, Paul says, in my flesh, so I'll have no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Notice Paul says, the great preacher, he says, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth what? No good thing. You cannot walk in the flesh and please God. Right. Amen. All the flesh does is what? Sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why you need a spiritual change. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.8. 8, the Bible says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Why? You ever notice what's in the flesh? Turn to Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, notice, now the works of the flesh are, are these, what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reviling, and such of which I tell you before, as I also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall, what? Not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're not saved this morning, you need to be born again. You need to do something with that flesh. You need to die to the flesh and ask Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Master of your life. That's what you need. In Romans chapter 5, turn over there, verse number 19. In Romans chapter 5, in verse number 19, the Bible says, For as one man sinned, Disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, that's Christ, so shall many be made what? Righteous. The only way a person can be righteous before God, he has to have imputed righteousness that only Christ can give. Amen. Because there's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. Not one. That's why it says in Romans 3.10, the Bible says in Romans 3.10, it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. 1 John 3, 9. Turn over there. 1 John chapter 3. In verse number 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. In the Greek it means habitually. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he's born of what? God. See, when a person becomes born, born again, he sins less and less. He doesn't habitually practice his old life again. Behold, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become what? New. Yes. You need to be a new creature in Christ this morning. You see, you must accept Christ as your personal Savior. But to as many as receive him, to them gave thee what? Power to become the sons of God. Right. People, not everybody is a child of God. Only those that are saved and receive Christ are children of God. Amen. That's why there's so many religions in the world. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to believe what the Bible says. How many times have you heard me say it? I don't have a religion, people. Right. Right. Well, you're a Baptist preacher. Baptists don't mean nothing. I know Baptist churches of the liberal don't preach the gospel. I don't have a religion. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Master. That's what I have. Yes. And if I die tomorrow, I know where I'm going. Because I believe the words of Christ. Yeah. Are you born again this morning? If not, and we give an invitation, you need to come. And ask Christ to come into your heart. You see, back in those days, they had the right... It, it, those were real preachers. Young preachers coming out of college, seminaries today, they don't preach that message anymore. They'll compromise to build a big church. I'm not going to compromise doctrine to get numbers. Amen. Oh, if we compromise here, we'll be running two and three hundred within four or five years if we compromise. But I'm not going to compromise the Word of God. And if you expect me to compromise the Word of God, you've got the wrong preacher. I'll resign and go plant another church. Because I'm not going to compromise doctrine just to get people. Real preachers back then, real preachers, they cared for souls. They cared for people. Today, preachers today are worried about the pulpit. They're worried about the parches. They're worried about their paychecks. They're worried about their pensions. God will take care of us. Amen. 
Back in the old days, the church had real people. What do I mean by that? Church members were genuine. Genuine in their walk, their talk, and they were faithful to the house of God. Not today. <coughs> I talked to pastor friends of mine who are my age, and uh, they say, where's faithfulness today? <coughs> Christians will come Sunday morning, and then they're gone three. Then they'll come two in a row, then they're gone five. You don't see, you know? Never mind Wednesday night and Sunday night. Where's faithfulness today? What's more important? Come on, at least be faithful on a Sunday morning, right? I'm not picking on you. I mean, we, we have good attendance. I'm proud of this. Church. We have good attendance, and even on Wednesday and Sunday nights, well, that, that differs because not everybody... <clears throat> Sunday nights, really, for those people that can't make it because of job-wise or whatever, so they come Sunday night. But back in the old days, man, faithfulness. I don't know about you, but, I mean, when I got saved, man, I couldn't wait to come to the house of God. <laughs> My wife and I, you know, even before God called me to preach, we were there Sunday morning, Sunday night. Every activity, everything we had, our life revolved around the church, not the world. God saved me from that world. I want to go back into it. Praise God for our faithfulness. Praise God for people that love the Lord here. And, and uh, Amen. I'm proud of you people. It's tough to serve the Lord, isn't it? Yeah. Especially today. Real people. They had real power back in the old days. The church didn't have to fake or put on a show that the power of God was there. When you walked into the building in the old days, you could feel the presence and the power of God. We've had some powerful services this year, last year. Yes. Praise God, it's going to get better. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 What well, has been exciting here? We're being led by the Spirit of God. Yes. And not tradition. That's what I like about this group here. Yes. I mean, we listen to the Spirit of God like this morning. We, you know, this, you know, we prayed for you because we heard that you know, a little down and your mama's having some trouble. And, and so, hey, let's just break out and let the elders pray. And Amen. if there were more, we'd pray. If there were more, we'd keep on praying. And then I preach five minutes, you go home. I mean, see, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And well, even while I'm preaching, if, 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 if the Holy Spirit got a testimony, you can get up and give a testimony. I'll stop. That testimony might encourage somebody. Pastor, I mean, oh, no, no, you don't do that. The tradition says, you know, you can't do that. Well, why can't I? I can stop preaching anytime I want to. Real power. It had real prayer too. They didn't have to, you know, have a room to pray back in the old days. They prayed. They prayed wherever God led them to pray, and whatever room they're in, they prayed. They had real professions back then too. When a person is saved, you know, listen to me, and I say this with, with, with my whole heart. When a person is truly born again, saved, you don't have to beg them to come to church. You don't have to. They'll want to be here. But boy, I tell you what, when I talk to preachers, it's like, they say, Dwayne, it's like, you got to beg them to come to church. Well, not this, not this preacher. If you don't want to come to church, then don't. I'm not going to beg you to come worship. Right. Right. That worship should already be in the where? In your heart. In your heart. Should be, I shouldn't have to beg you. I shouldn't have to <clears throat> preach a message on, are you reading your Bible? 
If you're truly born again, you should be reading the Scriptures. I shouldn't have to beg you and preach a whole message why you should read your Bible. Or serve Christ. Or witness for Christ. Back in the old days in the church, they automatically did that. True, perfect. They were witnessing every day on the job. They were telling people about Christ. They were passing out tracts. Not today. But one thing I love to do for a guy called Preach, I worked at Fafta Bearing Company here in Connecticut, and it's closed up now. But it, <laughs> I got there usually a half hour early. I, for, I did it on purpose. You know what I did? I hit every bathroom in that plant with tracks. Every bathroom, there'd be a track. New Britain Baptist Tabernacle. You know? Then I'd witness. Not, not on the job, on break time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a little office in there, and I had, I had memorized scripture. I had, I had 15 cards. I wrote on yellow cards, yellow tags, and I'd win them out, and, uh, and I'd display them. And they say, what's that for? Well, I'm memorizing all these. Mm -hmm. But what do you mean? Begin to witness to them. Mm -hmm. Every chance I got, I witnessed. Pass out tracks. Seems like today, born again, people don't do that no more. What's so hard about carrying a track with you? Is, hey, if you've got time, would you read this? I would not. The one thing I've always feared as a believer was that I don't want to stand before Christ and have Christ tell me, why didn't you witness to that person who was beside you? They needed the truth and you did not give it to them. Man. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. Real professions. Sad to say, I believe that a lot of professions, people walk the aisle today, it's just here. It hasn't reached the heart. A lot of false professions today. How many people have we seen walk the aisles in the last three years? How many people are here? Only about three. Four, maybe. Yeah. See, they're the ones that really got saved. The rest is just emotional. How many times I've gone to those that walked the aisle here, go to their homes, and they don't want nothing to do with it. Well, I'm glad you got saved. Uh, here's your Bible. I want you to, well, you know. They really didn't get saved. But at least they got the Word. Yes. That's cool. They got the Word. <laughs> you know, back in the old days, the church was ready in the good old days. What do you mean by ready? They were ready to work. They did not sit back and wait for the pastor to do all the work. I'll do it if I have to. I mean, back in the old days, they rolled up their sleeves, they went out into the fields of harvest, and it was ripe. And they, and they went to work. And worked to serve the Lord. They were ready to witness Acts 1.8, right? We're, we're to be witnesses. Matter of fact, remember when Jesus went up? That was the first command He gave to the disciples. You are witnesses, and you're to carry this gospel out to all the world. Every town. Every county. <coughs> that, was, that was what they were supposed to do. They were ready to worship. They were ready to go to war. They knew they were in a spiritual battle. They knew there was a war on. The war between good and evil. They knew it. And they were, as Paul said, I fought, fought a good fight. I had finished my course. If you're saved this morning, have you finished your course? Do you, do you know, as I preached Wednesday night, do you know who you are? What God's called you to do? There's a fight out there. And if we stay fast with it, if we stay true to it, yes. 
It's a good fight, amen? amen? Now, sometimes that fight's not easy. But at least try to fight. Fight that good fight of faith, amen? What it's all about. The church in the old days were reaping what they sowed. Go good old Galatians 6, 7, and 9. If they sowed the seed, then they reaped the seed. If they sowed to the flesh, then you sowed to the flesh. But what I love it is that you ever notice back in, you talk to people that have been saved a long time and they remember the good old days. And that's okay. But back then, you ever notice they had compassion for people? They had compassion for drunks. They had compassion for drug users, drug addicts. They, you know, those dirty, snotty old kids coming to church. They cared about them. They cared about the dreads of society. Seems like today, the average member comes in, worships, goes out, and that's it. They don't seem to care about anything. Morals were right back then. They knew right from wrong. I was listening to some people this week. I'm looking at, what happened to the good old right? Everybody wants to do wrong today. And when you try to set them straight, it's like they look at you like you're funny. Yeah. Like there's something wrong with me. We have to start doing right. And expose the wrong. You see... The plan of the church is not to build a building so they will come. <coughs> the plan of the church is not to promote programs so they will come. Mm -hmm. Now there's nothing wrong with those, right. but that's not the main reason. Right. Right. People, you have to win them. If you want a church to grow, you gotta get out there and you gotta start witnessing and getting people saved. Then they'll come. Remember good old Proverbs eleven thirty? Turn over there. Proverbs eleven, verse number thirty. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that would his souls is what? Wise. Wise. Now I don't say what I'm about to say. I'm not saying that to put you down. I'm not saying that to make you feel bad. I'm not. But answer this question. When is the last time you won somebody to Christ? When is the last time you actually opened up your Bible, showed them the plan of salvation, and they accepted Christ as their Savior? When's the last time you've done that? Something to think about, amen? You say, Pastor, I haven't done that in a long time. Well, then go home and confess it and do it. I guarantee you, if you I guarantee you, if you walk out of this house of God today, and you say, Lord, this week, I'd like to tell somebody about Christ. Would you bring them to me? You know what's going to happen? It'll happen. I tell you, the greatest joy a Christian can have is leading somebody else to the Lord. That's great joy. And then you have the blessed opportunity to, to what? Disciple them. Lastly, the church in the old days had revival. 
the question we have to ask ourselves, I even ask myself, how come we don't have revival today? Now, I've heard these, well, that was back in the old days. You know. Now, I was back in, you know, Charles Finney's day and R.A. Torrey's day and George Whitfield. And, you know, those, those great revivals in the 70s, you know, it, it just doesn't happen today. What? You know why it doesn't happen? Because you don't believe it well. Right. I think the average church today has got themselves <laughs> defeated before they even start. Right. You see, they knew God was absent. You see, you, you don't have to be in church long to know if it's dead or alive. Yeah. Doesn't take long. I'm sure all of us, if you go on vacation, you go... And then, you know, you go somewhere, and you, you can walk into a church, you can tell if it's alive or dead. You really can. Yes, you can. I told you, the testimony when, when I was in Bible college and <clears throat> looking for a church, and walked into Cornwall Baptist Church, and preacher was preaching and I went, Amen! All of a sudden I got this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that church was dead. <coughs> that, I kept, kept going back, I kept going, Amen! Amen! You know, like, what's wrong with this guy? Yeah. Well, when they called me as their associate pastor, one of the ladies came up to me and said, Pastor, you remember when you first came? Yeah. She said, we were really worried about you. I said, what do you mean? She said, we thought you were Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I was. I don't know. Baptist. Yeah. As my wife says, we're Baptocostals. No. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with saying amen and being alive unto God. Amen. 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 It's a church, not a library. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Man. It's a, it's, a, it's a place of excitement. It's a place of loving God. It's a place of getting excited for God. It's not a funeral home. That's right. Right. You know? Boy, you walk into some churches, there you think, you know? Yeah. You know? Or you walk into some churches, you walk in, Hi, how are you? <laughs> this is a house of God. Be quiet. <laughs> well, it's a proper place to be quiet. You should notice here this morning when you see the lights go off and we prepare ourselves. Okay? It's quiet time. But saying hi and getting a look is like... <laughs> yep. Revival. Amen. People, you know when God is in the midst... You know when the Holy Spirit shows up. Yes. And boy, the Holy Spirit's been showing up here for. Yeah. It's been exciting. Yeah. It is. And it's going to get better. I can't wait to. Yeah. I can't wait. Two, 2019 is a faith and excitement and and uh, yeah. you know now the devil's working overtime. It sure is. You know. Look out. Yep. Especially with the sickness going around, the flus and the colds and the. And people having cancers and stuff like that. and That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, we got victory. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I'm excited to see what 2019 is going to bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? See, back in the old days, they, they knew God was able. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, from talking to other preachers who planted churches and the ones that are growing because the congregation knows that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. They believe God is able. The Bible says there's nothing too hard for, him to, for God. No. All we have to do is believe it and hook on to it. And things will happen. Things do happen. Amen. 
The one thing I'm excited about here, this community knows us. Yes, right. And they talk about us. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. See, they knew all they had to do was fall on their knees and pray, and they believed revival would come. They knew God's glory was amazing back then. When God is moving in a service, you will long to see it happen again mm -hmm. and again and again. And that's what's been happening. If you've been paying attention, that's what's been happening here. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's right. Now what the devil wants you to do is dwell on the negative, dwell on... Yes. Right. Oh man, I got this problem, I got that problem, I got this disease. Right. You know? Right. I was talking, we took Kathy to breakfast yesterday and whew, should have done that, cost me a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> As well it should. It well should. Um, and we, we saw one of uh, the associate pastor's wife there, you know. And uh, she saw us and said, hey, pastor, how's it going? You know, we're really praying for you and, and all that. And I said, well, thank you. I said, but I got a win-win situation. And I said, if I die of liver cancer, where am I going? Heaven. And if, I, and if God decides to keep me here longer, that's even better. Yeah. So I got a I got a win win situation. Yeah. I got I got a God who loves me. I got a Savior who loves me. I have fellowship with Jesus every day. I have fellowship with God. It doesn't get any better than that. Right. And if He don't wants me to go home, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. She won't, she won't like it, but <laughs> no. But you know what? Yeah, right. I'm not I'm not going to let the devil defeat me. Amen. Amen? That's right. I'm good. You know why? Because I long to worship Him. And when we come into the house of God, I love to see God working in people. Yes. 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 That excites me. If it excites me, I can imagine what it does to God. So, people, don't give up. Hallelujah. Stand your ground. Yes. Don't get yourself defeated. Hallelujah. Pastor, it's just too late. It's never too late. Amen. Amen. Are you breathing? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Walk out here and say, I can do all things through Christ who what strengthens me. Hallelujah. Lord, yeah, I made some mistakes. Who hasn't? Lord, here I am. I recognize my condition. I ask for forgiveness. Lord, can you use me again? And God says, well, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what I've been waiting for. And watch him use you like you've never been used before. Amen. Amen. So, the good old days were good, but the present is even better. Amen. 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 You hang in there. Hallelujah. Because I tell you, I make you a promise. This pastor will be by your side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This congregation will be by your side. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. If you will be humble about it. Pride has a way of saying, I ain't going to tell nobody nothing. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> sure, that's what pride does. But if you humble yourself before God and before God's people, they'll pick you up and they'll help carry your burden. No greater joy than that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray that there's one here that's not saved that they'll come forward and
be convicted of their sin, and that's Christ to come into their heart. Altars also open for any believer that feels that, oh Lord, they've been a failure. Hey, we've all been there. We've all failed. But our failures can turn into triumph if we just acknowledge you and humble ourselves before you. So Holy Spirit, do your work, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.